Okay folks, in this episode I'm going to show you how to make these mandalas. They're really easy to make. When you learn how to make them, you can make an infinite amount of these. You know, they fit great with music or it's just like a basic motion graphic. They're quite versatile. You know, you can animate the depth of field. You can animate the camera going through them. Um, loads of different stuff you can do with these. They're great. Anyway, without further ado, let's get to it. We're going to be working in this quadrant here from across here across there and across there and then we're going to mirror it over and then mirror it down I'm going to hit shift A, add, curve and we'll go to path I'm also going to turn my snapping on up here so turn snapping on and we'll go to absolute grid I'll then go to edit mode I'll grab all these vertices and then I'll drag them across to there I'll then drag this vertice, hit G grab that across, grab this one let's say we'll grab it round about here and then we'll grab this one, grab this over to here, and then I'm going to hit E, and I'm just going to click it in, E, click it in, E, click it in. And I'm going to keep doing this, and I'll come back to you when I've got kind of a pattern going on. And right at the end, what I'm going to do here, is I'm going to make sure I've got two vertices on the same line and pointing inwards. You can spend a bit more time and effort doing your pattern, but this will do just for an example. So I'm going to hit A, I'm going to grab all the vertices. I'm also going to set the transform pivot point to 3D cursor, which is in the center. If your cursor is over there, just click Shift C and it will recenter your cursor. With all the vertices selected, I'm going to hit Shift D, R, Z, 1, 8, 0, 4 rotation on the z-axis by 180 degrees i'll hit a to select all the vertices i'm going to hit shift d r x 1 8 o and then with all those vertices i'm going to hit shift d r 90 so it's rotating on the y-axis by 90 degrees and then hit a shift d r 45 so that rotates on 45 degrees this is our mandala you can make several of these so we're actually going to be offsetting them so i'm going to have duplicates on the y-axis we'll probably have about five or six but you can make as many as you like i'll just delete that one we don't need it i then go over to my curve data over here i'm going to go to geometry and we're going to add a bit of depth to it so say maybe 0 0.025 we're also going to go to the start and end mapping i'll just turn this back on i'm also going to open up my graph editor actually before i go any further i'll open this window and then we'll select graph editor and i'll also give it a material go to surface make it a bright white color set the specular down and the roughness all the way up alternatively you know you can do that through the shader editor here it's easy enough go back to my graph editor so I'll go to my curve settings, I'm going to go to my end factor and start factor and both of these are going to be set to 0.5 and 0.5. It will disappear, we'll just add a couple of keyframes there. I'm going to have my scene set to 240 frames, you can have your end frame set to whatever you like. Then I'll open up this tab, if this isn't displayed you literally just drag it across and it should appear. That's the geometry start keyframe, it's the geometry end keyframe and we'll go over to here to the modifiers. On geometry start I'm gonna add a modifier and we'll go for noise maybe I'll set the scale to say 50 let's just push play so what we've got so far I'm gonna set the strength to maybe 1.25 I'll be happy with that also restrict the frame range so I'll open up this so the first frame will be frame 1 the last frame will be 240 because there's 240 frames and I want to ease in over a period of 30 frames and ease out over a period of 30 frames so then it should loop It'll be a perfect loop over 240 frames so now what I'm going to do I'm going to copy this modifier I'm going to paste it on the end value now if I push play there'll be nothing there because both of the seed values are on the same curve. Now there's two ways of going about this folks. We can offset it slightly. Hang on, let me just grab this up. We can offset it slightly. It will follow it will follow along like this. It's quite a good effect. Or we can actually offset it considerably, so it's a completely different seed. And then it will randomly generate. I'm going to set it like this for now from here I'm going to grab that curve I'm going to hit shift D and then I'm going to 
drag it on the y-axis by five units five meters and then with this second curve selected I'm actually going to change the offset the offset for the last one the end point was 100 so on the first one I'm going to set to 200 and on the end frame I'm going to set to 300 and now when I push play you can see that they're both generating but they're generating on different seed values so let's do that again I'll duplicate that drag it on the y-axis the last one was 300 this would be 400 on the start I'll just open this so you can see what I'm doing and this one would be 500 this just ensures that none of them have got any of the same seed values okay I'll duplicate that again on the y-axis by 5 and we'll do the same for this one this one will be 600 and then this one will be 700 and we'll do it one last time so I'm going to hit shift D drag it on the y-axis to around about there then this will be 800 and this one will be 900 so now if I push play if we go to front view as you can see they've all got different seed values there what I'm going to do here is add point lamps so I'll go shift A add light point I'm going to drag that on the y-axis by say one two three let's just uh, set a reference for that light let's go for a dark blue well a pure blue and we'll turn the value up to say 500 for now let's just see what that does I might switch to EV just uh, for ease of use you do get better results in cycles but EV will do me for now quickly set up my camera as well select my camera I'm gonna go back let me see what my focal length is I might set my focal length to something like 50 mil and then I have changed the distance in my first light I might increase the strength to maybe 750 watts I'm gonna duplicate that so shift D then Y and we want that three meters in front of this next one we'll go for a pinky color on this one and then I'm gonna hit shift D drag it on the Y three meters before the next one and we'll go for a red value shift D Y I'll go for an orange value shift D Y and on this last one I might just go for a light blue okay let's see what we've got really simple really effective another thing we can do so if I go to frame one on the camera on the location I'm gonna add a keyframe on the X and a keyframe on the Z I'm also going to add an empty and on the camera I'm gonna to go to constraints and I'll go to damp track and we'll do a damp track to this empty here you're going to have to change the orientations, probably negative Z or something like that. So now with my camera selected, I'll go over to my graph editor and on the X location, I'm going to add a driver and this is going to be a noise. And let's say we'll give it a strength of four and maybe a scale value of 25. Okay, so if I grab that empty and I just drag it down to the end one, so now the end one isn't moving much and the parallax is happening towards the front but if I drag it the opposite way like closer to the camera the parallax happens at the end so I'm gonna grab an end point say 10 meters so that's smack bang in the middle I then select my camera I'll decrease the strength to maybe 2 on the X we want to restrict frame range start on frame 1 end on frame 240 blend in on 30 over 30 frames and blend out over 30 frames maybe I'll change the offset to a random number and I'll duplicate that and I'll add it to the Z location we'll change that random number now we've got parallax movement I'm gonna hit shift a add empty and we'll go for let's say a plane axis go to frame 1 I'm gonna add a keyframe on the Y location I'm going to skip 30 frames I'm going to add another location keyframe then I'm going to skip five frames and then I'm going to change this to five meters and then we're going to add a keyframe there and then I'm going to skip to frame 60 I'll add another keyframe skip five frames and then we'll go to frame 10 I'll add a keyframe there this is where our camera is going to focus this is going to be the depth of field controller 
go to frame 90, we'll add a keyframe there, then I'll skip 5 frames, and then we'll go to frame 15, I'll add a keyframe there, go to frame 120, we'll add a keyframe there, we'll skip 5 frames, we'll go to 20 meters, we'll add a keyframe there, and we'll go to frame 150, we'll add a keyframe there, 155, and then we go back to 15 meters. Then we'll go to frame 180. We'll add a keyframe. Skip five frames. Then we go to 10 meters. We'll add a keyframe. Then we go to frame 210. We add a keyframe. 215. And then it will be five meters. We'll add a keyframe there frame 240 we had a keyframe so then that means on frame one it's got to be five meters so then we skip five frames zero there we go and we had a keyframe there so then that should loop perfectly let's just check it out Let's see the result of that. To set up that, we'll just call that focus. Go to the camera. Go to the camera settings, click depth of field, and we'll select that focus object. We'll turn your blades all the way up. Let's just see what we've got. I'm gonna turn this f-stop all the way down. Okay, I'm kinda of happy with that. So that's only the bare bones. You do need to work a lot more on your mandalas. For example, some of the scenes I've done before, I've actually had three or four different designs and then I've duplicated them on the Y axis and had different seeds. And then I've also had the camera traveling through the mandalas and you can do it in a way as the camera travels through, you can get a perfect loop. I recommend experimenting with these. They're really fun to make, really quick to make. Have a mess about with materials like emission shaders, also changing it to metallic. You can add a UV sphere. I wouldn't use a UV sphere, I'd use a round cube myself. Scale that all the way up. Delete all these front vertices up here. I'll just show you quick. So delete all these, delete vertices. You'd shade that smooth. You'd then set this to a glossy material with zero roughness, so it acts like a mirror, and then mess about with the size. That can produce some pretty amazing results when you're looking through the camera, like you're getting the reflections of the mandalas. It works better when you've got the mandalas set to admission rather than just the few shader like I have at the moment. That's pretty much it, guys. So I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. Please consider liking and subscribing. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.